Hello YouTube, I'm Time Itself, and in this video guide, I'll be covering the Javelin, the engineer's lock-on launcher for use against ground vehicles and watercraft. A laser designator can be used to assist the Javelin, providing additional range, damage, and adding aircraft to the list of potential targets. In Battlefield 4, you need to maintain the target lock after firing the missile in order to guide it to the target. And, vehicles are given an indication of where this lock is coming from, making it easy to turn in time to see where that missile pops up and go ahead and gun down the unfortunate engineer who's trying to maintain that lock. Because of this, one of the roles the Javelin is reasonably suited for is as an engineer passenger in a helicopter, where you're usually just providing repairs, but the Javelin will let you provide some additional firepower too. The helicopter keeps moving around, making you a much harder target to hit, where you would normally be very vulnerable just standing still, looking down the sights of the Javelin. In most situations, the Javelin is simply the inferior launcher in the engineer's arsenal. However, given the assistance of the laser designator, it becomes very effective. So let's go ahead and get into some stats. As with my other engineer launcher guides, I need to give a big thanks to Labby over at Simthick.com for a lot of the launcher flight characteristic stats. There is a link in the description below to that thread. Also, DICE likes to change stuff. There might be some changes and I might make some mistakes, so I'm going to add some more links in the description with the best information that I can find. The Javelin has the standard starting ammo count of 5 and is tied for fastest reload with the law at 3 seconds. Like the law, the Javelin is not affected by which side it hits or the angle of impact, but across the board, damage is low. This is to balance out the ease of use with that lock-on feature. The Javelin does 50 damage to a Jeep, and it can be a reasonable choice, provided you can maintain the lock, and the Jeep isn't a combination of too far away and moving too fast. We'll talk more about why later. Against trucks, 33 damage. Low, but still enough to be a mobility hit, and so the passengers will often jump out, not realizing how long it would take you to actually destroy that truck, and that the gun in it would be a fairly safe way to actually take you out with the Javelin, given that you need to maintain line of sight. Against anything more substantial, from the rib boat, to the Amtrak, to the LAV, to the main battle tank, it's 25 damage. That's low compared to the potential damage of the RPG and SMA, but it's still higher than the law, and higher than the minimum damage of the RPG and SMA. The Javelin can lock onto targets within 350 meters in 1.2 seconds. From there, flight time compared to the other launchers is a bit strange. The Javelin has a very high top speed, but the initial launch speed is low, and it accelerates no faster than the other launchers. And it takes almost 5 seconds to get up to its top speed, and by that time it's traveled more than 350 meters. Despite being a lock-on launcher, travel time is very important for the Javelin because you probably need to maintain that lock to make sure it hits your target. Let's talk more about that lock-on. If the lock is broken, the missile will continue in the same direction it was already headed. A vehicle that manages to break the lock, but doesn't move, is probably still going to be hit. Or, if you're confident the missile is going to hit your target, you can go ahead and lower the Javelin and start reloading again, not having to wait for it to get there. Now let's talk about countermeasures a bit. IR smoke, the dense white cloud that surrounds the tank completely, doesn't affect the Javelin, and you can just laugh all the way to the bank. Smoke screen that comes in above the tank in four clusters will break the lock, and you'll have to wait for it to dissipate before you can use the Javelin. Of course, active protection will stop the missile, but it's funny knowing that one of the three countermeasures doesn't stop you. In some cases, raw speed can evade the Javelin. This guy pops a smoke screen but drives through it so I hold the lock, the missile misses. He doesn't have active protection, you'll see there, smoke screen, but I held the lock, the missile missed. What happened? As I noted with the law video, the target is where the vehicle is, not where it's going to be. And so you'll see there it curves in at the last minute and hits the tank in the rear, because it has to play catch up at that point. There seems to be some combination of speeds between the vehicle and the Javelin, and again the Javelin's speed is heavily based on how long it's been in the air, where the vehicle can get just out of the way, because the Javelin isn't moving fast enough to hit it, but the Javelin is still moving too fast for its turn to go ahead and come in and hit the vehicle from behind. Throw in a well-placed wave on the high seas, and yeah, it's easy to see how the Javelin can miss like that. Interesting physics problem, and if you want to do Battlefield Mythbusters, plenty of fun stuff there. 
Another counter to the Javelin is to just get out and repair, especially at ranges where you have to maintain the lock for longer, and so your damage per second goes down even further. It's not going to do mobility hits. The engineers can just repair the damage and drive off. It's incredibly frustrating when you're using the Javelin. At 150 meters, if you're using it normally, the Javelin's probably going to take close to 30 seconds to put four shots into a vehicle. Whereas the law could put out lethal damage five shots in probably 20 seconds. So how do we get around this? Well, like the Igla and the Esra, which DICE has said they're going to change, so I don't know what's going to happen with the Javelin, you can do a double shot. Lock on, just so you can fire the first missile, get it up in the air, lower the Javelin before the missile starts coming down, otherwise you won't get it back. Reload, lock on again, and fire, and both missiles will hit. This will save you the travel time of the first missile, and speed things up a little bit. And it's also a really mean way to get around active protection. Keep in mind those two smoke trails will make you a much bigger target and they'll have even longer to go ahead and try and kill you before you can do any damage. Or you can use an empty vehicle or emplaced weapon to get a missile in the air, reload, change the first missile's target, the guy won't have ever heard the first lock on, and then fire again. Be very confused when two missiles come in with only one lock on tone. Let's talk about laser designated targets, usually provided by your friendly recon with the appropriate gadget. The Javelin's range increases to 500 meters, and you shave 200 milliseconds off the lock-on time. Like the Law and SRA, the Javelin gets targeting assistance from the laser designation, but unlike the Law, the Javelin does more damage. Your 25 damage hits become 50, which are also mobility hits every time, and so the laser designated Javelin becomes a very, very scary weapon. The laser designated Javelin can also go after aircraft. Against a transport helicopter, it'll do 60 damage and a mobility hit. Despite many hours spent playing with the Javelin and recording footage, I don't have the all the details that I would like. I've just I've given up. Most random recons don't run laser designators, and when I do get a friend in with me, we usually end up targeting a tank. And while that happens often, I, I got plenty of footage of laser designations on tanks. You're going to see that. I simply have no way to go test the laser designator. I can't do it in the test range, but I can only get myself in there. I can't go rent a server because that's not available on console, and so a lot of these questions I just have to leave open, and if I can find answers, I will put links in the description. A big question is who or what has to maintain that lock. Is it the engineer with the javelin? I don't think so. Is it the recon with the laser designator? Maybe, but the laser designation icon goes away after a couple seconds. I, I don't know why. What's up there? Or is it the missile? That would make it particularly vulnerable to countermeasures, but if neither party, if neither of the two players have to keep designating things, well, you can go on to another target. The Javelin seems to pop up a bit higher with the laser designation, but it doesn't seem to travel any faster like it did in Battlefield 3. Uh, the only other thing I might note is that friendly smokescreen does seem to block your view. So, yeah, <laughs> if you... random situation, I know, and I can't find the clip where it happened to me, but yeah, yeah, funny stuff. Would I recommend using the Javelin? No, not really. Even as a helicopter engineer, I think you're probably better off with the law. It is simply too easy to get distracted while trying to aim down your sights with the thing, and if your helicopter pilot keeps turning, it, you'll just get dizzy and won't be able to do anything. And, well, random helicopter pilots, what can we say? Anyway, guys, I hope this video was interesting. Hope you found it useful, <laughs> even though the recommendation is just don't use the weapon. Finally, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and cover the s -Raw. Really looking forward to that. It promises to be a lot of fun. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.